Okay, so the revolution has finally begun. Um, Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada, has legged it, basically. He's, uh, he's seen some genuine resistance, which, and the resistance is genius. You know, the idea of, of truckers with massive, great uh, uh, trucks uh, coming into Ottawa is something that he can't deal with, and the police can't deal with it either. You know, they're very good at arresting truculent pastors from Poland, uh, but they're not very good at doing much else. And watching the scenes of people cheering them alongside the motorways, on the, uh, standing up on the Passovers, and it's bitterly cold out there, but, but thousands of them are out there cheering them on. And as I say, it's genius. They cannot do anything about it, which is why Trudeau, uh, like all left-wing cowards, uh, has simply uh, run away, basically. And Trudeau is one of those people from the World Economic Forum. Uh, you can listen to Klaus Schwab talking about him uh, just here. What we are very proud of now is the young generation, like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, um, President of, Brazil, of uh, Argentina and so on, so that we penetrate the cabinets. So yesterday I was at a, rece at a reception for Prime Minister Trudeau, and I know that half of this cabinet, or even more half of, uh, half of this cabinet, are for our uh, actually young global leaders of the world. Now that is an amazing thing to to actually state boldly that uh, that Schwab has just said. You know, not just Trudeau, but half of the Trudeau cabinet, and we know what they've been doing over the last two years. You know, we've looked at them with increasing disgust at their totalitarian bullying and tyrannical behaviour. You know, they were. Uh, Trudeau ordered the arrest of the Polish pastor, whose name unfortunately I can't remember at the moment, which was just absolutely obscene, repeatedly arrested him. And they're very good at uh, um, cracking down on little old ladies and uh, old men and, and all people really who, who dare to protest against their new tyranny. But the trouble with the truckers is they've obviously got trucks and you can't start hitting trucks around the head with a rubber truncheon and chuck them into the back of a paddy wagon. You can't do it. It's absolute genius. And Trudeau, as a result of being called out, and I'll, I'll come to some of the things that he's said. You know, first of all, he said that you know, this is a fringe minority that should not be tolerated. And he's talked about the anti-vaxxers as being... Uh, misogynist and racist and he's a truly disgusting typical typical left-wing disgusting little man but he's got his comeuppance now and I think it's one of those things that that uh, you know it, it's going to happen all across the world I hope I mean I, I know that there are now um, talk of a convoy to Washington uh, in Italy they're starting to get the trucks together and this is the beginning of a genuine revolution. This is the beginning of the end uh, for the COVID tyrants. And I wrote an article November last year uh, asking what would happen when, when the uh, tyrants are basically all Western politicians and the more left-wing they are, the more tyrannical they are. Um, I wrote an article saying what will happen when our uh, politicians reach their Ceausescu moment. And for those of you who can remember, Ceausescu uh, was making a speech uh, in Romania in 1989, 1990, I'm not quite sure, uh, and he lost control of the crowd. The crowd turned on him after 40 odd years of, of, of gulags and murder and beatings and police cells and rubber truncheons. Suddenly, Ceausescu was on the run. Uh, but they got him, and within a matter of three or four weeks, he was executed along with his wife. And I wondered what would happen when we reach our Ceausescu moment, when our politicians reach our Ceau uh, Ceau uh, their Ceausescu moment uh, in the West. And I, I was specifically talking about Boris Johnson, but I was basically saying that, that if a million people turned up in Whitehall, uh, with pitchforks, what would Boris Johnson and 
and Sajid Javid and co, what would they do? Would they, would they make a stand? Of course they wouldn't make a stand. They would run away, which is exactly what Trudeau has done. And I think that the Ceausescu moment, I'll link to the article in uh, the box underneath this video, but I think the Ceausescu moment is rapidly approaching uh, for all of the uh, little wannabe dictators who are drunk and giddy with the power they've had over the last two years, which they awarded themselves uh, over the COVID uh, emergency. It's starting to crumble. It's starting to end. This is the beginning of the end for them, the beginning of the end, and it's high time it happened. And I hope to God that before this year is out, hopefully within the next six months, the entire COVID uh, edifice will utterly collapse. All of these people involved in it, uh, from the very top to the very bottom, including the absolute filth and scum who are now running all of our media. In Trudeau's case, uh, he has given so much money uh, to the media, tens of millions of pounds, you know, so that they are all on his side, which is what a dictator would do. Uh, but um, Rebel News is not on their payroll. Obviously, Rebel News is embedded, uh, Ezra Levant's Rebel News is embedded with the, uh, with the Canadian trucker convoy. And just look at the way that Trudeau talks to a journalist that does not report things that, uh, you know, in the way that he wants them reported. You know, here is a journalist asking him some questions. Just listen to this. I have a question from Tamara Ugolini from Rebel News. Mr. Trudeau, the only reason that I'm allowed to ask you this question is because today the federal court ruled that the government doesn't have the right to determine who is or is not a journalist. This is the second election in a row that the court had to overturn your government. Do you still insist on being able to make that decision and why? First of all, questions around accreditation were handled by the press gallery and the consortium of uh, networks who have uh, strong perspectives on quality journalism and the important information that is shared with Canadians. Uh, the reality is organizations, organizations like yours uh, that continue to spread misinformation and disinformation on the science around vaccines, around how we're going to actually get through this pandemic and be there for each other and keep our kids safe is part of why we're seeing such um, unfortunate uh, anger and lack of understanding of basic science. And quite frankly, your, I won't call it a media organization, your group of uh, individuals uh, need to take accountability for uh, some of the polarization that we're seeing in this country. And I think Canadians uh, are cluing into the fact that uh, there is a really important decision we take about the kind of country we want to see. And I salute all extraordinary hardworking journalists that put science and facts at the heart of what they do and ask me tough questions every day, uh, but make sure that they are educating and informing Canadians from a broad range of perspectives, which is the last thing that you guys do. So he's lost control of, of independent media, even though he's tried to clamp down on them. But as I say, it is definitely the beginning of the end. And please, God, let these people stand trial for what they have done. And, and thank God for the truckers. There is a, a GoFundMe page, which I'll link to underneath this as well. Uh, at the moment, it's up to something like $9 million, which is fantastic. But it's minus 20 uh, in Ottawa. And these people are staying there for as long as it takes, they claim, which I hope they do, because it's going to come down to one side has to back down. Now, if Trudeau backs down, that's it. It's over in Canada. You know, a new prime minister will not emulate what Trudeau has done. It's over. If he doesn't back down, if the truckers stay there for two weeks or three weeks and it gets too cold and too unpleasant and they leave, 
it's all over for us. This is the focal point of the revolution. So get onto the GoFundMe page, fund as much as you can afford so that people can feed them, uh, buy them drinks, buy them accommodation. It's bloody cold in a cab at night. They're not going to have their engines running all the time. This is the focal point of the revolution. Support the Canadian truckers. And if it moves on to other countries, support those truckers. If you want to get your freedom back, this is where it starts. This is where it genuinely starts. The truckers are our saviors. We will not get democracy back if the truckers lose. That's pretty much it. I'll, uh, I'll close by saying I now have a Patreon page uh, if anybody wants to support me. And I will also link at the end of all of this, I'll just run a little compilation of, of um, mostly Ezra Levant's Rebel News media clips uh, from Canada. That's it. Uh, thank you very much. Viva la revolution. It started. It started.